Uh, first and foremost, let's get into this story. Um, pointed out this this was pointed out to me by uh, my good friend Rolf, runs the Louisville Pro Activist Report. Shout out to Rolf. Uh, miss that dude. I used to be able to go see. I, I was you know every time I'd go through Louisville, he he would come out and check out the show and. Uh, he's a, a fantastic independent journalist and activist, uh, doing good stuff on the ground, covering a lot of the protests, covering a lot of the uh, direct action in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, a couple weeks ago, maybe it was two weeks ago, I came at you guys with a story about, um, you know, the, um, the, the murder of Travis Nagdi. Uh, who was a prominent Black Lives Matter activist, and his his homicide, were, the cops were like, they, we don't know who did it, it was a carjacking, something happened, and uh, we're at a bust, so what abs? We'll see you later, uh, you know, and, and then, and then kind of just bailed on, uh, on the whole thing, which was, which is a huge bummer, um, so, we have another major activist, a Black Lives Matter activist in uh, in Louisville that was uh, that was killed, that was shot. Uh, both both Travis and this gentleman, Chris Smith, was shot. Uh, this is the second major activist in the Louisville area, um, and once again, you know, we we have the cops kind of playing aloof. In this situation, um, Chris Smith's wife went down with the local pastor and identified the body and saying that, yes, this is Chris Smith. He's been shot. He's been killed, which is incredibly unfortunate. Uh, and my heart goes out to his family, to all of the uh, all of the activists in Louisville. Um, you know, it, it's especially when you lose someone that is um, that's in the movement. And and as and as uh, a big of a personality in the movement as as these two gentlemen were, uh, from my understanding, you know it it does it. It's difficult not to see this as some kind of a you know warning kind of kind of thing. Now, the the police department and the coroner's office, as of uh, the you know, me making this video, uh, have not come out to say that it was in fact Chris Smith. They have not, they haven't identified the body, which is peculiar to me and makes me question why, why, why haven't they come out and said, uh, who this person is and you know, what, what groups they were affiliated with when his wife has, when a, when a, a, a pastor in the community has come out and, you know, said exactly who this person is. Uh, why, why is it that the coroner's office and the, you know, the police department is unwilling to say, is it because he's an activist? Is it because he's a prominent figure, uh, in the local organizing scene? You know, it, it, you, you have to ask those questions. Uh, it's very peculiar, especially when, when, the wife of the deceased, as it were, uh, uh, you know, to use the more stoic, sterile language, uh, because you're not allowed to show any emotion when you talk about any sort of issues, because if you get angry, oh, they label you as angry, and now whatever you say is invalid because it's tinged with emotion. Oh, how dare you have emotions about the death of an important, you know, uh, local leader of a movement. But if, if, the, if the wife of the deceased has been able to identify them, why haven't the cops, uh, you know, why haven't the cops taken the word of Chris Smith's wife and said, yes, we're, you know, confirmed? It's very strange. Now, the cops have also come out and they did this with they did it with, with they did this with Travis as well. Pardon the uh, stumble there. Um, there's no relation to Travis Nagdi's death, but primarily 
the big thing is they don't have enough evidence to figure out who did it. They don't have enough evidence to 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 figure out this homicide. Um, and you know, all, all the the coverage comes from the Louisville Courier, and they talk about how. Oh, there's this this wave of homicides going on in the city of Louisville right now. You know, this is the hundred some odd homicide that that the city of Louisville is seeing. So, you know, it's par for the course rather than asking, well, wait a minute, where's this wave of homicides coming from? What's going on? It, you know, is there socioeconomic problems that's creating a climate where, you know, these these homicides are are are, uh, are happening, you know? Why isn't why aren't the cops able to solve this? Why aren't the cops able to go after this? You know, are, is, is aren't you supposed to look for evidence? Aren't you supposed to to be able to find this stuff or check down track down leads, uh, question the people in the local movements, find out if he has any enemies? And if you ask those questions, you'll find out that the enemies are probably the Louisville Metro Police Department. They're the ones that have been the point of aggression to the protesters, to the people in these movements. Can't you go off of bullet analysis? Didn't you? If he was shot, isn't there going to be bullets somewhere? Why can't you look at that? Isn't that a lead? Isn't that evidence? And again, the the. The reason why something like that uh, would not be addressed by the cops is if, in fact, the cops were responsible for it. I'm not saying they are, but we can make a conjecture. This is two major leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement that have been gunned down in a matter of two weeks. And they're identical in the way that the police have responded to them. Oh, there isn't enough evidence for us to run a case. Uh, Carjackings happen all the time. Um, So on and so forth. Uh, And again, corporate media has stayed relatively silent. Uh, Like I said, the information I got is from someone that's on the ground, and they were finally able to send me, you know, a local paper covering... uh, uh, what happened and and here's the other thing right the Louisville Courier spent a large amount of times outlining Chris Smith's past criminal activity which to me are just proof of socioeconomic status and the connection to criminal activity when you are you know put into a very very um, low income socioeconomic status uh, meaning poverty when you're when you're impoverished you have to come up with creative ways to put food on your family's table and you and that's it it's all about survival and sometimes that survival doesn't come from having two or three jobs because you might not be able to get hired at two or three jobs or the jobs that you might get you know conflict with the other job that you do have a litany of other reasons so you turn to crime you turn to a quick way to turn a buck so you can, you know, buy groceries uh, and put food on your family's table. There, there, there's, no, there's no human story behind any of these criminal uh, activities, right? They're just like, this guy did bad things and he got sent to prison so he's a bad man. And the thing with Chris, too, is he did do an interview where he talked to the press and he talked about his criminal past. Uh, his his record and he said yeah it sucked that I had to go through that and you know uh, what I was really looking for uh, was purpose and a sense of family and I found that within the Black Lives Matter movement I found that within the activist movement people started taking care of each other there's this notion of being on the streets right and and when you're when you're in that position you're you're kind of competing for limited resources such as food and water, which is which all of the uh, the limits on the resources are all fucking manufactured anyway. The, the the scarcity is really manufactured to keep us fucking fighting each other, and and that's what it was. No one was really taking care of each other. 
but within the activist community, within the organizing community, that's what they were doing. And he was helping take care of uh, those within the movement. Not just that, too, but he was also um, uh, helping at-risk youth, right? That's the term, at-risk. They're at risk of criminal behavior because they are in poverty. And once again, the cycle continues, right? It's the same cycle that Chris Smith was caught in. But he was educating them. He took the education route and was trying to help these kids. They spent probably three paragraphs outlining this guy's criminal record and roughly one paragraph talking about his uh, community outreach, his activism, the way that he helps kids. So what do people kind of associate that with is that this guy is more of a criminal than he is someone that got his life in order and ensured that kids don't have to go down the same path. You could have essentially written that this guy has had trouble in his past. He went to prison a couple times, got out, decided he wanted to do something better, found activism, and, and found a way to help kids using education. And here's, wh- here's what some of the kids have to say, and here's what some of the activists have to say. But they didn't. They concentrated on his criminal behavior. Because, again, the, the idea is that if you are somebody, uh, if you are a person of color, the media is going to portray you as some kind of criminal, especially when you have been killed, to justify... That the death is okay. That we don't need to feel bad about this person's death. They were a criminal anyway. And they don't address the the reasons why people commit crimes. They don't address the reasons why someone might have to sell drugs in his neighborhood. Why Why is there an open window for drug trafficking in poor neighborhoods? Gee, I wonder if that has to do with the systemic problem that capitalism has manufactured. And once again, we are seeing another activist whose murder is not being investigated. Keep your eye on these things. If you got friends in Louisville uh, and... Again, I'm not really seeing a lot of people talking about this. Uh, It's peculiar to me that two major leaders of this movement in the city of Louisville, where you had a grand jury that fucking basically let three murderous cops go with a bullshit charge of, well, you fired at the door and you really should have hit that other black person. And because you didn't, we're going to give you the, you know, we're, we're going to charge you with the crime of shooting at a door. You're damn right people are pissed. And people have every right to be pissed. And you have two leaders of that movement that have now been gunned down. And the cops are basically saying, we're not going to investigate because evidence. It, we don't have enough evidence. Isn't that why we overfund the police is for this specific reason? Because we're all fucking scared and terrified that there's crime everywhere all the time. And now the overfunded fucking police department in Louisville can't solve a murder. The one thing that they're supposed to fucking do that they're supposed to protect people and keep people safe and serve the public. And they can't fucking do that right now. The leader of a movement is gone, and you basically say there's not enough evidence to go on. That you, that, well, then why the fuck are we funding you that much? Absolute nonsense. They're not investigating it. My conjecture is because it's a Black Lives Matter activist. Is because this activist called for defunding the police. I get it. It's a conjecture right now. There's a spike in homicides and the cops can't do anything about it. But we still need to give them tanks and drones and a flamethrower, a sound cannon, 
TIE fighter. Fucking a Borg cube. We gotta get them all of those things. A decommissioned Borg cube. We're not gonna give them with the fucking Borg in it. That's crazy. We're gonna decommission the Borg cube. But they can't solve two murders. That happened back to back. Of two people within the same group. Two leaders of this of a movement. What if we did that with MLK? I mean, we did. Major leader movements, when they get assassinated, you know, it gets pinned on somebody and then the case is closed. The police went into fucking Fred Hampton's home and blasted, showered that fucking apartment with bullets over, over a lie told by the FBI. And there were cops that quit the Chicago police force because of that. Ask yourselves why the Louisville Police Department, the Louisville Homicide Department, isn't uh, fucking looking for who did this. Why are they closing the cases? Why is this not getting enough attention? Ask yourselves that question. Conjecture will lead to this the same kind of conclusion that I did. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.